and running. An 11 game Monday highlighted by a doubleheader right here on NBA TV. TV. We got the uh, 2007 Coach of the Year, Sam Mitchell. Mm. They get all flustered still. Mm. I see it. <laughs> That's okay. Us here. I like that. <laughs> Here's Jim Jackson. <laughs> you don't get flustered? Well, I get brought back to my childhood with okay. you. I told you before, you were the part trick. of one of the great days of my childhood. And then in typical Nets fashion, you know what ended up? Hold up. He ended up kissing up to you more than he kissed up to me. Oh, my goodness. Come on, man. It's one of those childhood sweethearts. Hey, listen, man. One of those many trades I was involved in. Oh, my goodness. Many. The word, the key word is many. (laughs) That's okay. You win the league. You own the bus. January 17, 1997, the day that was supposed to turn around the New Jersey Nets franchise. It did turn it around. It did. (laughs) Right. It moved to Brooklyn. Until the next time. (laughs) I'm Jared Greenberg. (laughs) We've got a doubleheader for you on NBA TV. Late game tonight at 10.30 Eastern, 7.30 Pacific, Hornets and Clippers. First up, let's tell you about these uh, Warriors who are in New Orleans to take on the Pels. Warriors looking unrecognizable. 0-2 for the first time since Steph Curry's rookie season. And after spending the last five seasons beating up on teams, the tables have turned a bit over the first two games of this year, losing back-to-back games by 15-plus points for the first time since 2011. Following yesterday's blowout loss to OKC, Draymond being Draymond, keeping it real. I would like to see us play harder. You know, that, that'll that help a little bit, but the reality is we suck right now. And, you know, hopefully we'll get better. Uh, we'll continue working at it and try to get better, but we're just not that good right now. And that's, I mean, I, I don't know what better way to frame that for you or uh, tell it. You know, I could try in Spanish, but I ain't really that good in Spanish. <laughs> I love Drake. What, what other languages do you think you can... Uh... Wrap up what's going on there. Uh, How about English, Jim? Listen, let me tell you something. Here's the thing. The, the frustrating part is when you've won so much and been successful that dealing with this type of defeat is tough. Now, let's keep in mind, it took a while from the build up to the Golden yeah. State that we knew about. It's not like it just automatically happened. So they went through the stages to, to, to build themselves into a championship team. That didn't happen overnight. This is happening overnight. Right. You know, the destruction kind of of Golden State, and it's hard to deal with. But as a leader, and I know, Coach, you understand this, as a leader, you still got to stay the course. You still got to be the voice of positivity because you have a lot of young guys on this team that can be lost within this first week, this first month, and you can't get that back. You know, I was always told you find the true character of who people are when you go through tough times. Look, Draymond Green, Steph Curry, high character guys, but they got to remind themselves, Steve Kerr said it to coach. They were living in an alternate universe. <laughs> For five years, they were, it was the Warriors against the field. Mm-hmm. And they won three championships. The problem is when you're going all in to win championships like they should, because you know that window is, is short, mm-hmm. then you're not worried about developing young players. Because you're using whatever young player you got that can play a little bit, you're trading them to try to get veteran players because veterans step up and play well in the playoffs. So the, goal, so the Golden State Warriors... They got to understand, and to your point, it's one thing to ease into being bad. But look, I will ask you, both of you guys, this, Jared, how bad are they going to get beat tonight? Because Oklahoma City drilled them, and Oklahoma City is not going to be a playoff team in the West. The Pelicans without Zion Williams going to struggle to have a chance to be a playoff team. But I would bet tonight that Golden State probably lose by 20-plus points because Draymond said it. I can accept young guys making mistakes. That happens. They're not playing with the effort. Young guys should be diving on the floor, playing as hard as they can, running through a wall. These guys are playing like they're supposed to be in the NBA. And if they look at how bad they've been getting beat, we could argue different. All right, well, no Drew Holiday tonight again, by the way, for the Pelicans. Right. You point that mm-hmm. out as well for them. But let's go back here, Jim, with uh-huh. the, 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 the kind of the balance that I think people are trying to weigh in their minds when looking at this Warrior team. It's, okay, yeah. The, the supporting cast is as bad as we've ever seen it around Golden State. Maybe we took for granted the Andrew Bogut's and the Sean Livingston's and, and the Andre Iguodala's. But with that said, they still do have, what, two, two top 20 players, two top 25 players, depending on when you, where you want to put Draymond and a guy who was a two-time MVP. So should there be more <clears throat> asked of Steph and Draymond to make up for the youth and inexperience around them? It, but it's twofold. One, Draymond is not going to give you the points, okay? That's the thing. He can give you the playmaking ability. He can give you the rebounding. He can give you the defense. At some point, you're going to need that second or third score. Draymond's game is not built for that, 
Okay, he's built for situations when you have a Clay. Okay, when you have a Kevin Durant, you facilitate, you fit, you, you feed off of that. That's what makes Draymond Green really great at what he does. Is one he understands he has a high IQ for basketball, so now he can feed off of those guys. But when you don't have those components, you can't expect Draymond to give you 20, 25 points a night. Okay, and Steph, I think Steve Kerr has to be very cautious yes. here. Okay, because knowing the type of season that you're about to encounter. How much pressure do you put on Steph to try to do everything? Again, this is a long-term play yeah. for Golden State. It's not just this year. Let, let me add on that. Steve Kerr just spoke a few moments ago to the media and was asked about that exact question. Do you just turn Steph Curry loose and let him become what James Harden was early in the year last year for the Houston Rockets when they dealt with all those injuries? Steve Kerr said, I don't think that's the answer. Just run a million high screens. We really don't have the personnel for that. Yeah, but people keep forgetting. He could turn him loose. But what's going on? I'm going to trap him. I'm not, look, I know Draymond can't beat me because he's not a scorer. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to let Steph Curry come off a screen and not double him. Who he's going to pass it to? I'm going to pack the paint, throw it to any of those other guys. They can't make shots. When you lose 80 points, look, think about something. When you had Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, and Kevin Durant, you were guaranteed about 80 points a night. Then on top of that, you had two of the best two-way players defensively in Klay Thompson and Durant. So the thing about it, you were able to hide Steph. It's not that Steph don't give the effort to play D. He's just not a great defender, but he was a good team defender. But when you look at these young guys now, they just don't have a clue about playing in the NBA. And to Draymond's point, that's fine. But you got to play with effort and passion. And that's the thing that disappoints me about these young guys. And they don't understand. This is a season audition because they're going to find out which four or five guys mm -hmm. can stay on this team. So those young fellas better wake up and understand. This is their, a great opportunity for them, not so much for the Warriors. But to take it a step further, I think Steve Kerr understands this, too. The mindset in the games are different between Harden and Steph. They're built right. a little bit differently. Plus, if you try to double Harden, at least you have a P.J. Tucker that can knock down a jump shot. You have an Eric Gordon that can knock down a jump shot. We have yet to see from Golden State, outside of maybe D'Angelo Russell, guys that can do that. So you can run and want to do, have Steph do all this stuff all you want. But at the same time, it's, it's so much easier to double-team a Steph in this iteration of Golden State than it would be to double-team a James Harden. And, and to your point, the guys who it might be, the likes of a Jordan Poole, it's just too early to know if yep. he's ready. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we've got the Warriors and Dubs tonight on NBA TV. The first half of our doubleheader will also have uh, a second game a little later on with the Clippers. That'll be a lot of fun to see. By the way, nobody's been more fun to see than Trey oh, Young. Fun. They're in action on League Pass tonight against the Sixers. Well, we've CTV. got an update on Joel Embiid. He okay. will indeed play. Oh, he's available tonight. Joel Embiid will play. He's got an ankle <laughs> and a lip injury. Well, he got hit. He got hit in the game the, uh, before he went out. Okay, I would ankle. not let. Hold got up, little, got a little elbow. You know, you're not gonna let nobody list the injury as a lip injury. I'm never gonna have no. that on. Now the ankle, never. yeah, but not a lip injury. No. Coming back with much more game time live on NBA TV. Wow, how good has Trey Young been? Over the first two games, all right, we'll pump the brakes a bit. We'll see how the Sixers will guard him tonight. Can, can you afford to have Ben Simmons spend possessions on Trey Young? It'll be part of the conversation tonight as we see the Atlanta Hawks host the Philadelphia 76ers. Here's what the Hawks are saying about their guy who was just named Eastern Conference Player of the Week. First player to total at least 38 points, nine assists, seven rebounds in each of his team's first two games. We, we can talk as much as we want about whether there's some anger factor that he didn't win Rookie of the Year trying to prove people wrong. Goes back to the parallel comparison that he's going to be on the rest of his career with Luka Doncic, the man he was traded for on draft night, who ended up winning Rookie of the Year. But whatever you want to call it, this dude is balling, Coach Mitchell. Yeah, absolutely. And if he needs that to beautify, I don't. I, I never believed in that stuff. That he's so upset that he didn't win Rookie of the Year. Yeah, probably that first day, maybe that first week. Mm -hmm. But no, this is about getting better, improving yourself. Think about something. Look at all the question marks on Trey Young. Not about his shooting ability when he came out, his size. Mm -hmm. Is he going to be able to take the physicality of the game? Is he going to be able to play 40 minutes in a tough physical game like the NBA demands? But those question marks, he's answered, and he's passed with fine color. It's not the points, Jimmy and Jared, that, that blows my mind. It's the shooting percentage, because you know a lot of guys can score points yep. be a volume score. Mm -hmm. But it's the shooting percentage and the assists. And the fact that his turnovers are coming down, that tells you as a young player, he's learning, high IQ, and he's growing. And 
he's grown into that role to be the face of the Atlanta Hawks. He is the face. Well, it's no question. And I love it because when he came out of school, there's a lot of comparisons also to Steph. Yeah. Okay, a lot of same things as, you know, people kind of discounted about Steph, the size, could he play point guard in the league, could he defend, all these same things we heard about Trey Young. But watching him in college, I said, no, he has something a little different about him. He's going to have to learn the system, how to play point guard in the NBA, how to slow down. Once he did that, the second half of the season is when we saw what we're seeing now and even better now. But I I love the fact that he took into the summer, he went into the lab and worked on a few things. One, that little floater in the lane. Okay, and he's really good right now, Sam, off of the pick and roll. Okay, now reading the defense, either I have the shot, I have the slip pass, or I'm going to penetrate a little bit more and get my teammates set up. All of that is because the game is slowed down for this young man, which is, we talked about this yesterday, for a point guard, extremely difficult when you first are thrown into this situation in the NBA, everything is moving like this. But once you can see the court and it slows down, now the game becomes easier and you become more efficient. Shooting 59% from the field. Unbelievable. Through two games. And, and the optics, too. Maybe we make too much of this, but he looks visually, looks bigger, looks stronger than he in the weight room. Just a couple of months Maturity, ago. Yeah. too, though. Yeah. Took less than a week into the season to start talking about Joel Embiid and his health mm-hmm. concerns. Same ones, not, not the same exact issues, but the concerns of whether he's going to play or not, just like in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. He will play tonight. He did not play with an ankle injury on Saturday. Uh, he will go tonight against uh, the Atlanta Hawks. You have to ask yourself, man. I, I don't know if we will ever see the full potential of Joel Embiid because of his injuries, and he's been injured for so long. Will he ever be able to get in tip-top physical shape to show you? I think this young man can be unbelievable, and he's already a great player. But think about if he could just get healthy and stay healthy for a minute because the best ability, and I keep saying it, is availability. And the thing about it, the Philadelphia 76ers don't know from game to game his availability. Uh, real, real quick, I'm sorry to interrupt you because we've got to get moving. I just want to ask you about the matchup here with these guys since it, the big story is Embiid will play. How do you defend Trey Young if you're the Sixers? Can Josh Richardson, remember, this is the biggest starting lineup in the NBA. Who do they put on the line? No, no, here's the thing. Trey Burke may be a factor in this game because he's smaller and can guard, you know, for the Philadelphia 76ers. But I do believe that the best thing that you can do is get the ball out of his, out of his hands, Trey Young. So look for a lot of traps early or, or when Trey Young comes across half court. Yeah. To get the ball out of his hands, force somebody else on Atlanta starting five to beat you. Hey, that's what Richardson's there for. Right? That's, who I'm, <laughs> but that's, that's, that's what he's there for. He's bigger. He's quick. He has that mentality of being a tough defender. He came from Miami. That's what they want. That's what Elton Brand wanted when he brought him to this team. Because, again, everyone knows they're lacking three-point shooting. But to compete for a championship, you got to have that guy that can go guard someone. And tonight... Mm-hmm. It starts for him. Hunter and Reddish, the two first-round picks for the Hawks. They'll be limited in minutes tonight. We'll see how much uh, Coach is able to play them. Uh, <laughs> Rob, oh, my, oh, man. my goodness. They took the red carpet out. Where's the red oh, carpet? Oh, Rob. Wow. Rob. Against his former team tonight. I, I guess the red carpet only on the weekend. Own it, man. Own I love it. it. Own it. Them shiny pants. I got to get me some. No, you don't. No, you don't. Don't do it, bro. Don't do it. Don't do that to us, man. Give me some shiny (laughs) shoes to go with it, though, baby. Chris Paul taking on Russell Westbrook. They (laughs) traded places. Russ, man. Look at that outfit, huh? Love it. Hey, I'm hearing word that the Rockets are going to do a tribute video for Chris Paul tonight. Really? Seriously? I'm I'm not making that up. (laughs) You serious? Was he that long enough? Hashtag I know. I I, I mean, good for Chris. I mean, but... How would you summarize his two-year career in Houston? Oh, I just got you to bite your tongue there. I, no, no, probably, I would say disappointing. Yeah, of course. Just because of the injury the first year. I mean, you know, that to me, when they had an opportunity to kind of get to the championship, that was it. Then the next year with Harden going back and forth and everything, I think what they thought they were going to get from Chris, and, and again, he's an older point guard that plays a particular way in a particular system. It probably wasn't as conducive to what they thought, but at the time, Durham Morey and the Houston Rockets needed to make a move. They needed to compete with Golden State, and he was the perfect viable option at that time. Don't push back with your little JB. I think what? he delivered. He just couldn't play enough. They got That's out, what I said, the injuries. Yeah. I, I think the numbers, the number, I think his numbers were fine. I, I think the assists, everything, that, and, and the leadership. He, it's when he got it. Yeah, the defense. Hold on, exactly. but did you think that the... Coordination between him and James Harden 
well, was really there. If the he wouldn't have got hurt in that that first year, okay, and they had Golden State down what three one. Yep. And if they go ahead on and close that out, it's, we're talking about a different scenario different now because scenario. again, but he gets hurt, and then then it comes back the next year, more injuries, and then at some point, James probably sitting there saying, "This is supposed to be my road dog, my right. running buddy," and he's always on the shelf hurt. But, but, and then but, when but, I need him the most, that's when he's hurt and because that hamstring is it's the weirdest thing. It seems like he pulls that hamstring or something with his legs every year in the playoffs. But here's my thing. If that's your dog, that's your man, you should be able to have that conversation and still be having that communication. To me, somewhere that communication broke down, which I think they were never that close. No. Because if, 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 you got, if you're my guy and we can communicate, and I know you're struggling with injuries, I got you, yeah. and vice versa. So when we go through a tough time, you're not going to see the separation. Actually, you're going to draw me in closely because I feel for you. Yeah. Chris Paul missed over the two years, regular season playoffs, 50 total games. Yeah. It's not even the number, though. It's when he it's, missed it. And when, missed, and when exactly. he missed it. All right, so James Harden. Mm-hmm. Overreaction Monday? Yep. What's wrong with James Harden the first week of the NBA season? Nothing. Just first week of the season. Shooting 24% from the field and just 12% from three. I remember this. Eastern Conference Finals last year. Fred Van Fleet couldn't hit the build. Couldn't hit the mm-hmm. country of Canada. Well, he made one shot, shooters. All it takes is one shot to get going. James Harden is one shot away from feeling something to get him but back is on. there a reason he's not feeling something so far? Well, also, too, you got to keep in mind, through preseason, he and Russ played together. Dan Tony likes certain things. But within their offense, when James doesn't have the ball, you're just standing around. Okay, now he's comfortable with the ball in his hands, mm-hmm. you know, 65 75% of the time. It's going to be different this year with Russ. But I would say this. The thing about James Harden, would I be worried if he was just a shooter? Yes. Mm-hmm. But because he gets to the free throw line, he gets out in transition, he can get second shots. Those things like that as a score, the jump shot. How many some, guys struggle that bad in average 23 points a game? Uh, that's what I'm – and how many, and how many guys <laughs> – He you, can still get you some buckets. But, Sam, how many guys have you seen during the course of the season where they've had a stretch where their jump shot didn't fall? I mean, that, that that's, that's going that's to going happen. happen. Yeah. But he's a scorer, so he'll be able to get through this situation. Yeah, he's gotten to the free throw line 26 times in just two that's, games. That's my point. 25 of them, right? How, how have you seen Coach Mitchell the way Russell Westbrook has adapted? We saw that little spat game one between the two of them. How's this playing out for you through two? It's going to take time. And I, and I think, look, everybody overreacted because those guys kind of – but you're talking about an NBA game during the moment, the intensity, everybody's up, everybody wants to play, everybody wants to play well. So those things happen. Jim, i tell you this. That happens 20 times a day at practice. It happens 30 times a day during the game. But the thing about it, once these two guys – you got to remember now, they haven't played together in a while, and when they played together – he wasn't Re- Russell Westbrook, and he, he wasn't James, James Harden. Harden. That's right. You know what I mean? Yep. They were just mm-hmm. young, up-and-coming guys that was fun, and they were just having a good time with all this talent, winning basketball games. Now, these two guys are superstars. Right? They're must-see yep. TV. So it's going to take them a minute to figure out how to work through it. But at some point, when that light bulb kicks, up, kicks in and they figure it out, it's going to be something to see because – those two guys can put so much pressure on the other team defense. It's scary. Well, and the difference, Jared, look, last year, Mike D'Antoni really didn't have to change the offense that much because Chris Paul played at one speed. Mike D'Antoni wants to get back to playing six, six seconds or less like we played when we were in Phoenix. Each year he slowed it down in Houston. At, and that's my point. And James played a little bit slower. So it's going to take, it's going to take a little bit of time to adjust to the speed. Listen, everybody wants to play fast. But until you're in that system where you got to run all the time, it takes a minute for the body and the mind to. You got to get all in shape. That's you got to get. You got to get in shape to do it. <laughs> yes. Well, you can talk about. You know. You can talk about fast-paced offense, and that a lot of people equate that to transition basketball. It's in the half court where they got to start moving. Well, here's the problem, Mike. This is where the adjustment has to be made. Mike D'Antoni talked about this specifically. We're going to be who we are. Sometimes James is going to be standing. Sometimes Russ is going to be standing. That's not a really. He's not going to change. But, but that's not a great formula for these two young men in the half court situation. Plus the other three guys on the court, if they're just standing, that's you can get away with it in regular season. Right. But when you're playing against a great team defensively, and all you're doing is standing. It's easy to guard. Thunder Rockets on League Pass half hour from now. We take a timeout and come back with the Auto Trader pregame show to get you set for the first of our doubleheader on this Monday. Steph and the Warriors looking for win number one against Brandon Ingram and the Pelicans, who are also winless. Come on back live on Game Time.